Okay, one sec, let me kill this. No problem, Pranav. Uh, I went ahead and started the webinar. We'll give people a few minutes to uh, trickle in. So I'll let you figure out your camera. Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining. Um, we're having some issues uh, with Pranav's camera, so we'll get started in just a second. Oh, awesome. There we go. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, I will just go ahead, uh, since we're already a few minutes past the hour, I'll just get things started with some opening comments um, and then, yeah, we'll pass things off to Pranav. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate everyone joining today's Chit Chat Research Seminar with uh, Pranav, who is a community data scientist here at SafeGraph. Um, for those that I haven't interacted with before, my name is Miki Kazahaya. I'm one of the community managers here at SafeGraph. Um, before we get too deep into the session, I just want to make sure everyone is aware of some upcoming events that we have. Uh, we do have another knowledge series event happening on September 13th with Jenny Doan of the SafeGraph product team. Uh, for those that haven't attended our knowledge series in the past, uh, these are sessions usually led by SafeGraph team members with a real focus on refining uh, various valuable skills uh, within data science. So in our upcoming knowledge series, Jenny will show you how to better understand customer demographics, uh, develop context around store performance, and compare trends against competitive businesses. So uh, just here in a few minutes, I will drop the link for that. Um, just gonna go over the format for today's session. So here in a few minutes, I'll introduce our guest speaker and pass it over to Pranav. Uh, he'll run through his presentation. However, uh, we always love when community members chime in uh, throughout the presentation with any questions. So don't feel like you need to wait to hold your questions off until the very end. I will keep an eye on the chat and the Q&A um, chat box for any questions that trickle in. So feel free to dump those in uh, as you think of them. Um, let me see here. Otherwise, we will go ahead and introduce Pranav. So Pranav is currently a third year student working towards his Master of Science in Business Analytics from the Rady School of Management at the University of California, San Diego. Uh, when he's not busy working on data science projects, Pranav enjoys woodworking and playing fetch with his dog. So uh, thanks so much for hopping on Pranav. I will pass things off to you. Uh, hi guys. Uh, give me a second here. Let me share my screen and we can get right into my presentation. All right. Can everyone see my screen? Yep. Looks good. Thanks, Bernard. All right. Sounds good. Uh, okay. So, uh, like Nikki said, I'm a uh, third year student at UCSD and I'm uh, a community data scientist at SafeGraph. And this is the uh, project that I've been recently working on. And uh, so essentially the project is revolving around the applications of SafeGraph data in correlation with machine learning. So uh, essentially this project looks to use classification to classify POIs and uh, to simplify the classification process, we went ahead and uh, we chose three, uh, what do you call it? We chose three uh, POI types to classify bus stops, train stations, and airports. And we ran a uh, essentially a four-part project on how to classify these uh, POIs as uh, what they are. So the part one was first just identifying the most optimal ML algorithm for uh, classifying safecraft data. The uh, second part was using feature reduction and uh, model optimization through model tuning and uh, things like PCA, SVD, and LDA. And uh, part three was using a uh, Spark Deep Learning classifier, the uh, multi-layer perceptron classifier to uh, classify safe graph data. Um, and part four was using ensemble classification to pull together these ML algorithms and uh, optimize, optimize the POI classification. So uh, for part one, we went ahead and uh, we chose three classifiers, the first of which was the naive Bayes classifier. And uh, when, when ran on this data set, it produced a 26.5% accuracy, uh, which is very low, um, but that can be attributed to uh, the classifier considering each of the features that we use for this process 
as an individual as like its own thing instead of uh, considering it with the correlations of other features inside of the data. And uh, so this was essentially like our first starting point to see how the data performed against a naive classifier. And uh, as you can see in the heat map, the uh, classifier tended to predict almost all the items as train stations rather than anything being classified really as bus stops and airports. And as you move down in this presentation, you can see that this slightly varies. And if we look at the second part, which is the decision tree classifier, uh, you can see that it has about a 75% accuracy. And uh, uh, it has a 75% accuracy. And it does, again, does considerably better than the naive Bayes because the naive Bayes was a naive classifier. And uh, as you can see here, the way the heat map is produced is a little bit different now. It looks like uh, the bus station uh, predictions are completely gone. There, there's no uh, records being classified as bus stations. And there is a very good reason behind this, which is the way in which our uh, data set was unfortunately structured, which was uh, the Safecraft data for bus stops is unfortunately a combination of multiple uh, POIs, not just bus stops, but also rental services, uh, things like uh, yacht rentals, and basically a lot of things that don't really quantify as a bus station in a sense. So I had to manually go through and uh, classify these as uh, bus stations by hand to establish a ground truth. And when when I did this, this significantly, uh, what do you call it, this significantly reduced the number of records that was determined to be bus stops. And that causes a uh, mismatch in the size of the data set. So there's this imbalance in data leads to, as you can see throughout the uh, presentation, this leads to a lot of issues with properly classifying bus stop data. Uh, Dr. Pranav, uh -huh. uh, just one question. Uh, actually, similar questions coming in from the community uh, that I, I figured I'd interrupt you just for a second. So uh, what data does this research use and what is the training or test sample? Yeah, so uh, the data that we're using is the uh, patterns data for all of the US. So essentially uh, the patterns data for air airports, train stations and bus stops. And uh, the training, and so this is over the course of, I believe we used about three years of data. So. 2018 through 2020, if I'm right. So, uh, so 36 months of data, and uh, we split it. I think we split it 80 20 for training and testing. And yeah, so we went ahead and used the patterns data, exploded out all of the uh, the visits and the uh, popularity metrics that were contained in JSON files, so that we had about uh, 100 plus features, I believe. So yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Bernard. Uh, yeah. So uh, looking next at the next classifier that we used, which was the K nearest neighbors. And uh, this classifier produced about a 70% accuracy. And uh, you can see that there's a, there's a few records being uh, predicted as bus stops here, a, lot, a few more than what we're seeing in the decision tree, but uh, which, again, the decision tree performs the way it does because of the imbalance of data. And since there weren't that many bus stop records, in comparison to train station and airports, the number of predictions were extremely low there. But since the K nearest neighbor doesn't work in a similar fashion, you can see a couple of records being classified accordingly. And this is a bit lower than the uh, decision tree classifier, but uh, you can see that it uh, classifies airport data very well. And it uh, again, it classifies bus stop data better than the decision tree, and uh, it does slightly worse with the train station classification because of the trade-off with the bus stop data. So, moving on to part two, which was feature reduction. So, for this, we went ahead and used uh, three feature reduction algorithms: uh, the PCA, LDA, and SVD, to attempt to see which uh, help boost the accuracy of the, model, of the model the best. And uh, first we used uh, PCA, and you can see that the 
uh, Naive Bayes goes up by about 3%. Decision Tree actually goes down a little, and you can see that K nearest neighbors is essentially about the same. So, and these are the respective heat maps for this. So that was with PCA, and uh, I believe we reduced it to about eight features uh, from uh, 120 to about eight features, and this was the result. And uh, looking at now, looking at uh, LDA, you see a huge boost in the accuracy of uh, uh, Gaussian night bays because of uh, uh, because of this feature reduction algorithm. Uh, so for this, it was reduced into two features with LDA. And uh, you can see, again, even with uh, the K nearest neighbors, you can see a little bit of an increase in accuracy there. But with the decision tree cal classifier, again, it becomes a little bit less accurate. So when looking at the final feature reduction algorithm that we went ahead and used, which was, uh, sorry, it's supposed to say SVD. So with the SVD algorithm, uh, you can see that the Gaussian night base drops back down in accuracy, but it's still slightly higher than the baseline accuracy, which was about 26%. Uh, the decision tree classifier goes to, again, lower significantly this time with using uh, SVD, and K nearest neighbor pretty much stagnates, which leads us to believe that in terms of feature reduction using uh, safe graph data, or particularly this uh, data set, LDA performs the best with uh, these models and produces the best tuned models. So uh, from this, so the, that was basically what I talked about there. Uh, from this, we move forward. Let's see, I have a question here. Uh, the, sample, the sample size ratio between airport uh, bus stop and train station. Um, so I believe for the training set, there was about, uh, about 5,000 records of uh, airports and uh, train stations, and really only about 700 or 800 bus stop records because of the way the data itself was structured. So there was a severe imbalance in data. So uh, actually, the probably the next step moving forward to see how well this, uh, these classifiers work on safe graph data overall would be to find a data set that's a little bit less imbalanced. And uh, our idea in the works for this was uh, possibly picking out maybe uh, fast food chains to classify them using uh, uh, visitor and popularity metrics to see how well that performs. Since uh, if we choose large enough chains like McDonald's or Burger King, this number will more or less be equal. And that would in some way uh, take out the imbalance that we saw here. So anyways, moving forward to the part three of this uh, particular project, we went ahead and used the uh, Spark multilayer perceptron classifier. So this was using Apache Spark. And uh, this was a little bit in a different direction than uh, the previous classifiers. This technically is a deep learning classifier offered by Spark. And uh, for this, what we had to do was these are this uh, little uh, table here is the layers that we had to, that we tested to see which performed the best. So each of these numbers are nodes, essentially. So the number of nodes that the uh, data is being passed through, so the neural network, and this is the out, and always you can notice it's three, which is the output, uh, the number of nodes in the output, which, uh, which uh, correlates to it, the data being classified as only three, uh, three different types of uh, transportation POIs, which is uh, airports, uh, train stations, and bus stops. So we went ahead and applied this. And unfortunately, the results were not as, uh, uh, were not as exciting as we expected it to be. We were expecting much higher numbers than uh, traditional machine learning algorithms. But unfortunately, the highest uh, accuracy that we were able to pull through was about 39%. So uh, this, this did give us a lot of insights as to how to use this particular classifier with this data. But and, uh, at the end of the day, it was a little bit underwhelming. Uh, so again, this can again be attributed most likely to uh, the way in which the data was imbalanced. So what we actually tried to do was uh, we tried to manually balance the data for this particular part, which uh, 
is uh, which isn't advised, but we tried to see if that would help in any way. But unfortunately, uh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at Timothy's question here. Uh, so he's asking me, what question are you attempting to answer? So I guess the question we're attempting to answer is, is it possible to use safe graph data to classify POIs as, as these look num as what they are? So this is probably a very small, uh, almost like a uh, first step into using this idea. So this is only using three uh, three outputs or three possible classify uh, classifications, but uh, we are looking to perhaps use this as a stepping stone to uh, take this forward and move on to see if safe graph data in general can be used to perform POI classification. And so anyways, back to my, uh, back to here. Uh, so we attempted to manually uh, balance the data here, which may have led to some underrepresentation, and uh, that of first say like airport data and train station data now being uh, manually pulled down to the same number of records as the bus station data, which uh, could lead to some underrepresentation of data, which could be potentially why we saw so many such a drop in accuracy. So the final step that we took in this particular uh, uh, project was using ensemble classification to improve model performance. So what we did was we essentially took the three uh, classification algorithms that we used in, in the uh, beginning of this uh, project, which is the Gaussian Knight Bayes, the decision tree, and the K nearest neighbors, and we combined them together in a uh, ensemble classification model. And uh, we trained the model using the data that we have at hand, and we produced an output of about 68.74%. So this is lower than the decision tree data, but when taking into account the fact that it's uh, taking the Gaussian Nye Bayes and the K nearest neighbors into consideration, this is much better than what should have been uh, seen, and that is a good sign. And yeah, so uh, the model, like I said, it performs better. It performs slightly worse than the decision tree model, but it performed better than the Gaussian Knight Bayes and the K nearest neighbors. And so it's performing better than the average of the accuracies, which is a good sign. Hey Pranav, um, a couple of questions that we're getting. So mm -hmm. could you, from Alex, could you describe some of the more important features you used? Uh, some of the more, more important features that we used uh, medium median dwell time was an important one. So how long a uh, how long a particular uh, device was in that uh, location. So that one was one that we used. Uh, we used popularity per uh, popularity per hour, and so we were using the monthly patterns. Uh, we used uh, visit uh, visit attribution data, uh, uh, raw visit times. Uh, so uh, the, so essentially, I attempted to take everything in the patterns data set that SafeGraph has to offer. And uh, I attempted to put that all into the classification algorithm as features. And yeah, uh, I'm seeing a question from uh, Sissy here. Uh, are the labels already in the data? No, they are not already in the data. So essentially what I had to do was I had to go through the data manually and uh, classify them as airports, bus stations, or uh, train stations using the uh, name of the location itself. So uh, using keywords in the name, so a little bit of NLP in the back to establish a ground truth for the classification. So yeah, there was the, the labels are not already in the data, unfortunately. And uh, I believe that is the end of my presentation. So any questions? Awesome. Thanks so much, Pranav. Um, we will give everybody a few more minutes if they have questions. Uh, yeah, so a couple are coming in. So one from uh, Rory. So I, I can handle this one. So Rory, um, I will touch base with you uh, after this call and follow up and get you uh, set up on shop.safecraft to get you access to uh, some of the data that Pranav uh, mentioned in his presentation. So I'll follow up with you, Rory, on that one. Um, another question from Alex uh, Pranav. Um, did you look at distance and time of future location data? The reason I am asking is because if it is an airport, people should often show up subsequently at locations that are far away in not that much time. Distance and time of uh, future location data. 
Uh, let's see. I don't actually think so. So actually, could you elaborate for me? Uh, distance and time of future location data. I'm not sure what you're referring to. Here, well, what I'll do is I'll let Alex uh, talk. All right, go ahead, Alex. Yeah, hi, I'm not sure if, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, you're coming in, thanks. Sure, so if you go to each one of those three different uh, types of locations, subsequently, uh, you should show up, not everybody, but a, a fair amount of the number of people that are in those locations should show up at different distances within a certain amount of time. So if you're taking an airplane, meaning you were at an airport, um, you're going to show up at a pretty far distance in not too much time. You couldn't have gotten there on a bus. You couldn't have gotten there on a train. Uh, also, right. the variety of locations would also indicate that it's an airport. Right. right. Also, if you did the same thing on a train, um, the variety of locations is actually rather limited. Uh, and again, time-wise, again, so if you measured time and distance to different locations and the variety of locations, you'd probably, my guess is, and by the way, having done this before, um, you're going to identify airplane and train. I've never done bus stop before. Right. So there is actually a column in the safe graph data that uh, refers that correlates the uh, particular device's distance from a uh, distance traveled to the POI. And I believe we exploded that column. We added it to the list of features. So to answer your question, yes, it is a part of the uh, data set that we use. OK. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Thanks for the question, uh, Alex. All right. Any other questions before we wrap things up? So it looks like everyone is, it looks like uh, I'm getting a question here about uh, to see a list of features used in each models. So actually we went ahead and published a few articles regarding this particular, uh, uh, this particular project on towards data science. So if you are looking for a more in-depth uh, look at what exactly it is that we did, uh, you can go ahead and what I'll do is I can even drop the links to these in the chat and you guys can take a look. And in the articles, I did include which, uh, specifically which features that I used. If you went ahead and took a look at the first one here, uh, you can see exactly which ones I used. Uh, like here, raw visit counts, raw visitor counts, visitors by day, distance from home, median dwell, bucketed dwell times, popularity by hour, popularity by day, and device types. So some of these like median dwell and bucketed dwell times, those would be exploded from based on the columns and we exploded them into multiple columns. So essentially that's why the number of features came out to be so high. Um, one other question, Pranav, you might see it from uh, JP. What is the benefit of using one of these methods over NLP for classification as you did for the training data? So uh, the, the benefit would be that we are now doing the classification using uh, physical numerical data, which is uh, kind of uh, which is attributed to like visitor and popularity metrics rather than just the name. Uh, so essentially the purpose of this would be to uh, hopefully take away the use of need to use just the name to classify something and use the popularity metrics themselves to classify it as a uh, as whatever POI it is, right? So that, that is why using NLP is probably not as beneficial as using a multitude of features combined together to make a prediction. Uh, question from Robert, my dog's name is Blue. Uh, he is a a uh, four month old Siberian Husky puppy. And yeah, uh, second question, can you comment on the original machine learning method described in the white paper? Uh, I actually have not taken a look at this white paper, so I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I've, I've never actually read that. So unfortunately, no. Thanks for posting the link to Pranav's um, publication. Appreciate that. Uh, yeah, so that's actually a four part series. Give me just a second here. I can just throw. Actually, Nikki, do you have access to these? Could you throw these on here? Yeah, I will certainly follow up with everyone and share that link. Um, no that's worries at all. Good. Yeah. Okay, sounds good.
it looks like we have one other question from Vic um, asking, what is a classification? I'm sorry. I'm Give me one second. Let, let me see if I can get Vic to, Vic, I'm gonna allow you to talk. Give me one second. All right, you should be able to talk if you'd like to ask your question. All right, might be having some issues over on Vic's end. Uh, no problem at all. If you want to ask additional questions. Yeah, go ahead. We're hearing yeah, you now. Yeah, basically I'm repeating the question that Tim asked earlier. What, what question are we trying to answer? Uh, so, what question are we trying to answer? So essentially the question is, can we use the SafeGraph patterns data? And can we use the features that are seen in the SafeGraph pattern data to uh, go ahead and classify a POI as a particular location or a particular type of location? So that, that's essentially the question that we were looking to answer. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, thank you again for all the great questions. If you have any other questions for Pranav after this, uh, you're always welcome to dump them in the channel SafeGraph data over on the SafeGraph community Slack. Um, Pranav is more than happy to answer questions and I'll certainly follow up too uh, and share those links as well. But um, like I said, we have another uh, knowledge series event coming up next week. I'll be sure to follow up with that information as well. But um, until then, thank you so much uh, for hopping on today and we will talk soon. Thanks everyone. All right, thanks guys.